Part 1. Technical Concepts. Welcome to the ECLIB Quick Guide. The following videos provide a stepwise introduction to the ECLIB usage. We will use an example to explain the technical concepts and the integration of the ECLIB into the project, and to show the practical work with the ECLIB. The following quick guide is intended to help you getting started with the ECLIB fast and easily. The guide therefore enters into the technical concepts upon which the library is based. This first video explains the technical and conceptual background of the ECLIB. It contains the following three main parts. ECLIB Fix 32, a data type specifically defined for the ECLIB, which makes programming with fixed point arithmetic easier and more convenient. A concept for achieving larger value ranges or higher accuracy, the shift factor concept. Consistent handling of data type limits and undefined results through defined exceptions. Let's start with the ECLIB data type ECLIB fix 32. The illustration shows the representation of the 32 bit fixed point number, which consists of assign 32 bit parameter par and a used defined constant, assign date bit representing the shift factor par SF with a restricted value range from minus 42 to 42. To facilitate the handling of this pair of variables the data type ECLIB fix 32 was introduced. This pair of variables of the data type ECLIB fix enables the ECLIB functions to take over the handling of the resolution of the different variables and thus makes programming fixed point C code very convenient. Now we will provide you with details to the shift factor concept. A fixed point number is a number consisting of a fixed number of digits. The position of the decimal point is fixed. By mapping to a limited data type, it becomes necessary to define a fixed number of digits for the whole part and a fixed number of digits for the fractional part. As shown in the diagram there is a trade-off between the value range that can be represented and the accuracy of the result. The fewer the decimal places, which are specified the wider the achievable value range. The higher the number of decimal places, the more accurate the representation. But as a trade-off, this results in a smaller value range, meaning this gain in accuracy is limited. To represent values with a desired accuracy, the resolution must be predetermined. This higher or lower resolution is achieved by a shift factor, resulting in fractional values in base 2. Each value can be represented as a combination of par, a parameter of the ECLIB, and par SF, its associated shift factor, which determines the resolution. The value is then represented by the formula, parameter par divided by 2 to the power of the shift factor par SF. In essence, the shift factor represents the shift of the decimal point. A positive shift factor par SF corresponds to an increasing accuracy. In order to obtain an optimal resolution for a defined value range, we recommend the use of the tool for calculating the shift factor. You can find it on eclib.com under tool. If you fill in lowest and highest possible value for your input signal, it automatically calculates the optimal shift factor for the value range and the associated resolution. To become familiar with the shift factor concept, we implement an example. First, we consider the volume of a cuboid, which is calculated using the formula, volume equals length multiplied by width and by height. In our example, the minimum volume of the cuboid is 0 cubic meters and the maximum is 1000 cubic meters. This means that the variable for the volume must cover a range of 0 to 1000 cubic meters. In the second step, we build a 32-bit representation that corresponds to our value range. To represent the value range from 0 to 1000 cubic meters we need 10 bits, which allows us to store values between 0 and 1023. 
In addition, one bit is reserved for the representation of the sign as all ECLib 32 bit variables are signed variables. So, we get the following representation within a signed 32 bit variable 1 bit for the sign, 10 bits to represent the value, another 21 bits, represented in gray, remain unused. So far, we have not yet used the shift factor, meaning this assignment of bits is equivalent to a shift factor of zero. However, the amount of unused bits suggests that there is still room for optimization of this presentation. Let's assume that our cuboid has a volume of 850.986 cubic meters. To represent this physical value exactly, we need a representation for the decimal places. For our convenience, we still have the 21 yet unused bits, which we can use for this purpose now. So, we shift the already used 10 bits as far as possible to the left, in order to have more digits to the right. This way we receive 21 binary digits behind the decimal point implementing a shift factor of plus 21. The shift factor is calculated in two steps. First the amount, since the value is represented in a 32-bit mantissa, this is our starting point and we calculate, 32 bits minus 1 bit for the sign minus the number of bits used for the value representation. This results in the number of unused bits and at the same time the amount of the associated shift factor. Secondly the sign, the sign of the shift factor depends on the direction of the shift. For a more accurate representation, with more decimal places, a positive shift factor is necessary and for a larger value range, which results in a loss of accuracy, a negative shift factor is needed. We receive a binary representation for our cuboid with a size of 850.986 cubic meters as follows. The highest significant bit is 0 and hence is representing a positive sign. The next 10 bits represent the binary value before the decimal point necessary to encompass the value 850. The remaining 21 bits can now be used to represent the value after the decimal point, 0 0.986. In this way, we get a binary value that represents our physical size of the volume with a clearly defined accuracy, which can be used for further calculation. Since this conversion of a floating point number into the binary representation of a fixed point number must be performed in many applications with physically measured values, such as sensor values, the ECLib offers a macro for this conversion. The ECLib set fix 32 macro translates a floating point value val into a fixed point number par, which can then be further processed by the ECLib functions. Optimizing the accuracy and thus limiting the value range can have negative side effects. If shift factors have not been selected properly, this might result in overflows for positive values or underflows for negative values. For the over and underflows, for incorrect inputs or undefined results, such as division by zero, the ECLib offers a set of predefined exceptions. These exceptions serve to highlight errors and to ensure a meaningful handling of incorrect values within calculations. For example, if a shift factor is chosen too big to get a high accuracy this can lead to an overflow or underflow, meaning that the calculated values can no longer be displayed due to the restricted value range. The exceptions are represented within the signed value itself, meaning that three certain bit combinations of your value cannot be used for representing a value but are used to represent the exceptions. Not a number, in short, none, is assigned if an invalid value or undefined value is reached within a calculation, for example if division by zero or an invalid entry takes place. The lowest value of your signed variables represents none. Negative infinity, in short, neginf is assigned if an underflow occurs or a result is too small to be represented in the defined value range. The second lowest value of your signed variables represents neginf. Positive infinity, in short, posinf is assigned if an overflow occurs. The highest value of your signed variables represents posinf.